Have a look what I've got. These are the brand new Adobe uh, Creative Suite Web Premium, and this is the Adobe Creative Suite Design Premium. I've got both of them, and it's very exciting. If you haven't got these yet, this is fantastic. Uh, Creative Suite Design Premium, InDesign, Photoshop, Extended, Illustrator, Flash, Dreamweaver, and Acrobat, and of course the Web Premium, Dreamweaver, Flash, Photoshop, Extended, Illustrator, Fireworks, Acrobat and Contribute, which I've just been having a bit of a tool around with. Gee, the boxes are little, aren't they? It's just, you know, not as big as what they used to be. Anyway, that's very exciting news. I just thought I'd show you that if you haven't got it yet, they're a great little design too. If you're a designer, have a look at the the, um, the packaging here. I'll just take the uh, sleeve off the outside. They're a nice little box, a little uh, panel on there. Off it comes, and yes, there is stuff in there. So there we have it. That is the uh, web premium. So we're going to be covering all of that stuff in uh, our podcast uh, going forward. So no problem there. Don't forget, if you're looking for a Photoshop Elements book, this is the one for you. Jack Davis, Mike McEwen, Wayne Rankin. How to wow with Photoshop Elements 5. What a great book. I've got some CS3 training coming up with Fuji Xerox. Hands-on training courses. There are a limited number of seats. I think we're doing half a dozen people only for InDesign CS3, for Photoshop CS3, and also for Illustrator CS3. So they're on uh, starting on Tuesday the 29th of May, I think, in Sydney. Have a look at my events page on my website, and if you're in Sydney, New South Wales, you could come along and attend those. Photoshop tip this week. So Photoshop Extended is it and a bit. So anyway, let's get into it. Photoshop CS3. Well, as usual, when there's a Photoshop tip on the way, there is a general buzz in the air. There's a huge amount of excitement. And this time, it is no different. I'm going to show you some fantastic new cloning or healing technology in Photoshop CS3 and we have some exciting images to work with too, some motorbiking images which is going to be great. So uh, first of all a tip, enable to enable you to switch between documents in Photoshop, so I have several open documents, Apple Shift or Control Shift tilde on your computer will toggle through any open documents that you have. It was a question I had the other week and it's a beauty. So let's start off with this one as our background. So we'll do a save as, so we know that this is the right one. And I'll just chuck this one on the desktop there. Always make it a Photoshop document. Never save things as JPEGs. Um, it's just uh, got compression on it. And of course, it doesn't look any good after you compress things too much. So there we go. Background, put it on the desktop. Sounds good. Press OK. Save. Whatever. OK. Grab the healing brush tool, not to be confused with the spot healing brush tool. Easy enough to do uh, because they look different, don't they? There's the spot healing brush tool. You can't choose a source with that, but you can with this one. Okay, so that's what we want to do. Nice size brush. And we come over here to layers and we'll give ourselves a new layer to copy onto. Beautiful. Okay. Next, we use the fantastic new clone source palette. Let's have a look at this. This is unreal. We can set a number of different sources to copy from, to paste onto or to paint onto our resulting document. Not only that, we can also apply a scaling and even a rotation if we so desire. So that's great. I'm going to show you this button in a minute. So we've got our background PSD. We've got our butt. We've got our button. We've got our layer. Just checking all these things. Let's choose our first clone source and use our shortcut, Apple Shift tilde, to jump over to our first document where we're going to hold our Alt or Option key down and click on this motorbike. That is clone source one. Apple Shift or Control Shift tilde will get our second one. Option click. And you can see it's remembering over here. It is remembering 
the name of the files, which is just wonderful. Get rid of that thing, shift tilde. And let's just say we'll pick this one as well. So this is the third one, just hide the way. Option or Alt and click on that one. And now we'll just tilt back to our background. There it is. Okay, so using the clone source palette now, we can click between these and you see it shows us, as I do that, it shows us the different file names. It knows where we're going to paint from. Let's choose the first one, uh, which we've got. Make sure we've got sample, current layer and below, so it will blend this nicely. And let's pop another motorbiker up here. Well, when I start painting, I'm just realizing that, hey, you know what? He is a bit too big and he looks a little bit too close to us in the foreground. So I'm going to undo that. And before I start painting this time, I'll hide the background, okay? Before I start painting this time, I'm going to turn on Show Overlay. So you can see, I can see the motorbike before I start painting it. And if I like to, I can make it a little smaller. So let's go for 80%. Maybe he's a little bit closer to the camera than that other motorbike. We'll put him right up there. And now we can paint him in confident that we've got him the right size. So we'll put him up there. There's his little helmet. We won't touch the edge of the, the screen there. Put his back wheel in. This is what we do in Victoria here. Do a little bit of motorbike riding. If it wasn't dangerous enough in the country, we can do a bit of this sort of caper. And we'll let our mouse go with any luck. He's going to blend in a little bit. Nice. Very nice. Let's choose our next one. Show overlay still on. We'll put another motorbike up. Mm, let's make him a bit smaller too. 75% this time. Yeah, he can go there. And then we'll paint him. It's a very easy process now with this um, clone source palette. For me, this is one of the most fun things. You can create montages and make this scene actually look, well, just a little bit uh, more exciting than it actually was exciting. But it's just a little bit more exciting now. Let's just put one more motorbike because we've got it there. Uh, we'll put him, let's make him a little smaller too. As a matter of fact, let's make him quite smaller. 60%, a little guy, well, maybe that's a bit small, so we can fiddle around with this. 70%, and we'll put him, uh, well, let's put him there, and we'll paint him right in. He's a beauty. And there we've got a bit of action going. No problems at all. So I'll do that. It's quite difficult to see these things on this uh, screen here. Let me just go ahead and uh, switch tools so we can get rid of that. That looks good. We've got everyone on layer so we can turn them off. Turn them back on again. And it's an exciting new scene. And I think uh, for you guys, what I might do is pop this on my website. Uh, last little tip, using the new Zoomify thing. And you'll see it. I'll put this on my website. I'll put the address down the bottom there. And what we do in CS3 is go to Zoomify. And this will allow us to put a high res photo that you can zoom into and zoom out of on my website. I'm going to call this um, Bikers, Bikers, CS3, uh, CS3 test. And then you guys can have a look on, on, on my website. Have a look at this Zoomify thing. It's very easy to save out. But that's the tip for this week. And thank you very much. What a great little Photoshop tip. I love doing Photoshop. I hope you enjoy watching it as much as I do. 13,000 downloads last month for Creative Suite TV. So we're really getting out there. And thank you very much for tuning in. It's costing me a fortune. So if you get onto my website, you feel like donating something to keep the show going, that would be much appreciated. Perhaps you would buy something from the store. Like that would be really great. Tune in again next week. And I'm going to try and keep this going.